Today we're in Maryland because I found one of my favorite bikes. I should say one of my favorite style bikes, but you know me, I am a Yamaha guy too. I guess when you do this enough, people just start trusting you because he said, if you get here and I'm not here, the garage door's open, the bike's inside the garage. So far, so good. And there it is. Oh yeah. This is a 1987 Yamaha FJ1200. Now the FJ was made from 1980 like four and it was the FJ 1100 in like 84, 85, 86. It went to the FJ 1200 and they ran that up until like 1996. But this one here is a 1987 Yamaha FJ 1200 and we're gonna see if we can make it run. Now the story I'm getting on this bike is it's been sitting for at least 20 years. And this gentleman bought it to go along with his other one because he likes these bikes and just never got around to it. So we're here to get it running and see what we can figure out. That's interesting. When I turn the bars of throttle cable, it gets tight. It's like it's not routed right. Ooh, the front brake actually. It's like the front brake actually works. Dry rotted tires, that's to be expected. Pretty clean though. So one of the problems with these early FJs is it actually has a 16 inch front and rear tire. Getting good 16 inch rubber today is hard compared to 17 inch rubber. There's just so many more options when it comes to 17 inch rubber. So what a lot of guys will do is actually switch these older ones over to 17s and they change the forks and then you can put a set of 17s on. Fork seals don't even look to be that leaky if leaky at all that's nice good clean paint nice grips beautiful dash there's the choke program suspension this has the anti-dive forks so you can see here we got anti-dive could be a little leaky in there we have a little corrosion here nothing bad kirker exhaust i mean come on tank looks good and we got some wires hanging out I guess that's from tank, fuel pump sending unit, something, stuff in there. I don't know what it is. The igniter box. There's some more things that aren't hooked to anything. All in all, hydraulic clutch. Feels like that's working. Chain doesn't look bad. Rear tires, Michelins. They're just old. Over 20 years old would be my guess. This is all clean. We got signals. That's not all broken up. This bike is nice and clean. Let's look in the tank. Oh, it's already not looking great. Eesh. Ooh. So that's not wonderful, but we, we've seen worse. Tank's already off, that's handy. If the work's already done. Let's set that off to the side. So what do we have here? Push and pull cable for the throttle. Choke, yep, choke cable there. Okay, so we got cables. A vacuum line off the intake. I'm gonna say that's gonna go to the petcock. So that's what that is. I don't know what that's for. Carburetors. This is not a carburetor. I'm assuming there's carburetors somewhere here for this thing. That'll slow us down then if we don't have carburetors. What do we got here in the spark plugs? They're loose. It's just finger tight. Look at, look how nice this is. I mean, it's scary. It almost looks like those were never even opened. So if that's possible, this bike is, what I say it is, an 87? So what's 43 minus seven? 36? This bike's 36 years old. Well, it doesn't look bad. Hard to see inside the cylinder. From what I can see, it doesn't look bad. But he said he thought this bike was put away well, meaning like maybe the cylinders were, were fogged or the cylinders were oiled. I'm guessing there's a reason the carburetors aren't on it. Maybe he had them off and cleaned them or maybe they're in pieces. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Let's put a battery in. We'll see if we can get it to turn over. That'll give us an idea of what kind of compression we have, what kind of state the engine's in. And then we'll look for the pieces we're missing, put on the seat and ride this thing home. Just that easy. It's never that easy. It's always that easy. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Okay. So where are these things all headed? I'm probably going to leave this stuff off. I'm just going to put on the power and the ground that we need. That's it. That's all. That's all I brought was a new battery. I couldn't find spark plugs or uh, I did bring some oil, but yeah, other than that, here we are. He took great care of it. Something. I mean, this bike is so far, so far, this bike is probably the nicest one we've done so far. Say so far again, Craig, I dare you. Well, whenever something's too easy, I start getting a little nervous. <laughs> Nope, we got a neutral light. Got a high beam light. Turn signal. Really? What? Horn. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pull these spark plugs and we're gonna give this a, a, a crank. Crank it over. Make sure everything's good there. 
Man, this is a really clean bike. We've got 15,687 miles on it. Digital clocks. Look how clean that gauge cluster is. I mean, for crying out loud. Let's see what happens here. Doof. On. Start. Okay. Engine cranks over. Seemed like it was cranking a little slow though. Guess what we have this all off. Let's see if we got the uh, spark. Spark. I'm gonna get these tightened up. I tried to find new plugs for it the other day and they didn't have them at the store and I was too late to order them. These are just gonna be what they are. They'll work. Dan, they're fine. Fine is good enough. Fine is good enough. Okay. Tools. Give me tools or give me death. I think I saw that flag over here somewhere, right next to Don't Tread on My 10 Millimeter. That could be a new song for uh, carb tunes. Don't Tread on My 10 Millimeter. <laughs> it's a sudden genre shift. There's got to be a song. New country. There's a songwriter somewhere out there in the audience. He's thinking let's, about it. <laughs> yeah, let's work on that. Okay. We have spark, we have compression, we have a new battery, and we're like 12 minutes into this process. I do need to find carburetors, because without carburetors, I don't think we're gonna get it to run. Okay, um, yeah, this stuff here, that actually looks like speaker wire. I don't know what this stuff is. I'm just gonna act like that stuff. It's not important. Let's see if we can find parts. Okay, there's our seat, there's our fairing. That's a frame piece. Look at this bike. This here is a 90, like a 90, early 90s, 92 or something. FJ 1200, same bike as that one, a little newer. So this one here, I think he already did. Did he tell me he did 17s or did this come with 17s? It looks like he swapped out the brakes. Oh, he's got adjusters on the forks. I like that color, that gray and, and is that blue or is that purple? That's really cool. Look how this one here has a more rounded windshield than that one out there. That one might have a high windshield on it. Yeah, look, we have uh, different brake calipers. I can change the levers too. There's some doodads on this bike. He has got this one here set up really nice. What else does he have under here? What's he, what's he peeking here? <gasps> the Beamer. Tell you what, lady and gents, you just can't go wrong with a Beamer. They are neat bikes. Oh, hey, I didn't even see this one. What's he got out here? <gasps> he's got a Tenere. I want to try one of these. That's a neat bike. So he's got a great collection of bikes. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, his, his style of bike is pretty much right there with mine. Sport touring, good sport touring bikes. It's been no secret. I love the Kawasaki Concourse. It is hands down my favorite riding bike out there. These are close. It's same style, sport touring. Um, so I'm anxious. I haven't ridden one of these in eons. So I'm anxious to get this thing going. What were we doing? Carburetors, we need to find carburetors. Yeah, like I'm seeing parts everywhere. He did tell me too, he has a whole set of, yeah, look up there. Up there's the fairing. What? <laughs> Here we have a tank. Looks like there's a push drive. I don't know. Some frame pieces, exhaust, down there's brake rotors, fuel pump. Oh, getting closer. Fuel filter. Is this stuff for this? Hey. Is it the carbs? Are they awful? No, they are not awful. These actually look like they're cool. No way. Look how nice these are. The slides work. What? Oh my my. Okay, so fuel line, what do we got here? We have vents, we have overflows. Okay, fuel line, fuel line. Look at that, choke cable. So that's gonna come in this way and pull open, close. Throttle cable here, there's your idle adjustment. That all works. Well, I'll be dipped. That's about as hard as it gets right there, though. This might have just gotten easier. I can't believe the carbs are all together. <laughs> they actually look clean. Now, that's a first. Yeah. Getting clean carbs Getting on clean, an old bike. Yeah. So before I was talking about throttle or uh, sinking carburetors. Here, let me show you what I was talking about here, actually. So what sinking the carburetors does is it lines up your butterflies so that they are all open the same amount so you have an adjustment screw here here and here one of them's your master so you'll adjust the other three to that one and if you look see how if i squeeze this here 
that changes this one. You would hook up hook up your carb sink tool. Uh, and I started using that digi sink here lately. I really like it. But you hook that up here. It measures, what I, I think, the vacuum that it's pulling through. And then you adjust these so that all that's even and now you have good crisp throttle response and things will run more either your engine will run more evenly so if you're asking about sinking carburetors generally look for like rubber caps vacuum caps or something here on top of your intake runners and then you want to look for screws that look like this between your carburetors make sure you're not looking at the idle screw but you know that's how you go through sinking carburetors. I'm not even going to pull these carburetors apart because although I'm not a gambling man, I'm going to gamble on this one that they're clean. Okay, so we got to put choke cable on and we have to put throttle cables on. I'm gonna get real with you guys for a minute. In 2016, a series of events caused me to physically and mentally implode. It was bad. And the worst part is I didn't have anyone to talk to. You see, family wasn't an option and I became such a burden on my friends that I had to seek help from outside my circle. I'm telling you this because I've been there and I want you to know, yes, even you, my big burly bearded kin, that it's okay to get help and talk to someone, especially during this stressful holiday season. That's why I teamed up with BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp makes finding a therapist easy and in most cases, they'll have you paired up with one in 48 hours or less. That's really quick. If you think you would benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click on the link below in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash bearded mechanic to learn more and see if BetterHelp is right for you. Or you can get started right away by filling out their questionnaire to assess your specific needs. The sessions with your therapist will be via phone call, video chat, or messaging. Whatever's the most comfortable and convenient for you. BetterHelp has connected over 4 million people, people just like me, with one of their over 30,000 therapists in network. These people are trained to listen and give good, helpful, unbiased advice. If you're struggling this season or you just need somebody to talk to, click on the link below or go to betterhelp.com slash bearded mechanic and see if BetterHelp is right for you. Have a great holiday season this year and know that you're loved and needed and appreciated. Now let's get back to work. Dan, I can't believe we might get a bike running that is not going to require a carburetor clean. Sound disappointed, Greg. Well, I know you were really looking forward to opening those carbs. And... Right, yeah. I was really looking forward to fighting with carburetors all uh, afternoon. You were training. Yeah, I certainly was. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. If you've ever seen that movie Rocky where he's running along the river in Philadelphia before he goes up the art steps, he runs past a boat there at Boathouse Road called The Quest. And The Quest was actually sank in our local quarry. And Dan and I got to go diving there and we dove The Quest. Did you know you dove a famous boat? No, I don't remember you guys telling me that. Did you know that at the time? Uh-huh, I've known that for a long time. Let's go diving again. Let's go diving again. It's getting I like cold. Diving. We just gotta get gotta go dry suit diving again. Yeah. There is. I should have been a surgeon or a dentist. Either one sounds like they'd make more money than what I do. But do they allow for as many mistakes as you do? Ah, good point. Are you saying I make a lot of mistakes, Dan? Or are you saying no. I would have <laughs> mal no. malpractice? Suits, Never. Or would you care to explain yourself? You don't make any mistakes, Craig. <laughs> I thought I made a mistake once. Turned out I didn't. Okay. Choke cable, I think. Wait. Man, I should have brought a heat gun. Cars might be new. That doesn't mean you're going to have an easy time getting them in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Holy crap. Yes. That was easy. Hey, we got carburetors. Got a throttle. I gotta tighten those up yet, but that's okay. Okay, battery, carbs, choke. Uh, choke's working. So we need fuel line. I saw fuel line in there. I'm excited. That is hard as a rock. But there's a there's a Y in there. So let's let's just for now, let's see if we put this on there. I brought my IV bottle. So I'm not even really worried about the tank right now. I'm gonna get this on and then we'll put the IV bottle to it with a little bit of gas. This thing might just fire right up.
pretty brittle. They are 36 years old. I get it. I'm pretty brittle too. I'm like rolling stuff through my head because I'm like, is it really going to be this easy? It can't be. It never is. Let's see what happens. Well, I guess if I put a hole in the hose, then I can just cut it off. Vice grip. Everybody says they rem we remind them of vice grip. Derek, if you're watching this, let's do lunch sometime. Okay, we got a we got a splash in here. Okay. I know this is crazy because it all seems so easy, but I think this bike might start. Only one way to find out. Should we try it? Why? You, like, We've been here for like less than an hour. Something's gonna something's gonna catch fire. But let's do it. How long? Did he, he said this was like he thought like 20 years. There it goes. What? No way. <laughs> wow. It did it, it basically fired right up. No way. <laughs> All right. Let's. let's. <laughs> I, I wish it were all this easy. I can't believe it's that easy. <laughs> we do have a lot of smoke coming from places. Why is there so much more smoke coming out of this one? I don't know. He, it, I mean, it sounded like he said they they um, oiled the cylinders and stuff before they put it away. So I, I don't know. I mean, the spark plugs were loose. So maybe there's some residue oil in there. We've probably got valve seals and stuff seeping through some oil and whatever. You know, when stuff doesn't run for so long like this, all the rubber and, and, and gaskets and seals and all that stuff that just starts to shrink um, because it gets so dry and whatever. And sometimes just firing it back up again and getting oil moving and getting fluids moving and things, sometimes those seals will actually puff up a little bit and start sealing again and things will start working. I, I don't know what to say like this was. I can't believe it fired right up. But we didn't check any of the gears. The brakes seem like they work, but I don't know. And we have a rusty tank. So we still have a bunch of work to do before we can get this thing home. That's just cooking off that pipe. I didn't see an air box. So I'm guessing we got pod filter somewhere or the air box, but I didn't see one, but we'll look. We gotta figure that out. We gotta figure out the tank, tires, I don't know yet. See if this thing will move, start, stop. Well, we know it starts, it runs. <laughs> yeah, but we need to make sure it'll run, start, stop, shift, that whole thing. This box is stuff. Okay, so if we need to do some fuel line. There we got some plastic. Yep, there we go. Oh, there's a petcock. I bet you these bolts here are what hold that frame together. They're at the carburetor. You're gonna probably need those. Air filter, oil filter. Let's go put these on, see what happens. I don't know how they had these on this way. I don't know how these are supposed to fit. Hold on, let's get, let's get this all back into place. And that might help things. Got a thing for this. There we go. Damn, just gotta try things. That's what I always say. That's the next thing, Dan. We find an airplane. Mm. Listen, we find an airplane that needs to be running and then we'll get an airplane running. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? we'll get it running. Then we gotta stop there. Why? I don't know, Craig, is there something you're not telling me? I ain't afraid of no FFA. That was a joke, cause it's FAA. We can run it, we can taxi it. We just can't take off. Unless it's like a FAR, a FAR 103. You don't need no stinking license for one of them, Dan. Oh, you need a questionable decision-making skills and an attitude for adventure. Okay, we need to figure out fuel. That's gonna become more and more of an issue. You keep looking at that tank like it's gonna fix itself. I know, <laughs> I got the, I don't want to. Let's tighten up the throttle cables before we forget. And maybe that tank will fix itself by then. Seems about right. What do you think? Is there any fuel left in here? Ooh. <laughs> Man. Hot dog. 
Those are all tight. That's all tight. That's all tight. Man, I am pumped. I am pumped. I am pumped. How do we clean that gas tank? Fuel filters? Do we just run fuel filters? Just like it'll like they'll drain out. It'll clog the fuel filter. We replace the fuel filter. Do it again. Yeah. And we just keep doing that all the way home. I think so. <laughs> the other option is I saw another tank in here. I wonder if that's any cleaner. There's just another tank. I don't see a key. I don't know. Let's investigate this. That is not great. That tank needs clean. There's a lot of rust in there. Thought maybe one of these keys would fit the other tank and try it. See what the other tank looks like. And nope. Probably get mad if we take that tank. I mean, if we fill it with something, we can slosh it around and and drain it and do that a couple times. I'm just not sure where to drain it. That bucket, I have that bucket. Still didn't clean itself. Okay, so the biggest thing we still have yet is a really rusty gas tank. Found a garden hose here, ran a garden hose out. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making myself at home, you know. So I'm gonna hose that out. I don't know what else to do. I mean, we gotta get on the road. Yeah, we gotta get on the road. Let's stop messing. All right. What's the worst that can happen? We can't use it the way it is, so. Is there, is there kinks? Yeah, probably. You want me to de-kink it? Let me look for the kinks. Oh, here's one. All right, try it again. All right, let's see what, oh yeah, there's chunks floating in there. Let me see. <laughs> oh yeah. We're gonna give it a shake, dump it out, see what happens, see what it looks like. Let's dump it into this bucket. You don't wanna dump it on one of the seat buckets? We'll dump it in here, just in case he doesn't want that in his yard. Really making yourself at home. I am. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a gas bucket. It's coming out harder than I thought it would, though. Oh, yeah. That'll, that'll get us all the way till stops see if we can get that pet cock off there all fun and games until you filled the tank with water ah, son of a biscuit i need my bucket seat dan is what i'm missing mm. oh oh shoot that's okay so you can see how much of the uh rust getting out of there that's a lot of rust we got out. And we're not even done yet. So if I, oh, that's full. Yeah, that's full of, you know, rust and stuff. That's an easy way to get the water out, I guess. Oh, yeah. All right, it's better. Perfect no, better yes. If you want to try to get as much water out there as absolutely possible. So this is a vacuum operated petcock and then it has a electronic reserve circuit. So when you power this, okay, so there's a little diaphragm in here and as this gets in, input pulses off the uh, intake track, it moves that little diaphragm and that's actually kind of like a little uh, fuel shut off. So that opens this up. Try something here. So fill that with water. Nope, nothing. I think I saw another pet cock. Let's go look, see here. Everything else has been going so well, why won't this? Yeah, nice. It's not full of rust, so. See, I think that's the diaphragm for in here and the spring, and I believe this is the O-ring. Look at that, Ooh. look at that, look at that, look at that. I just hear rust. I don't know if I really want to fill it with oil, water again. I had a fuel filter on there. We only got three hours to go. I mean, how many fuel filters could that be? Let's try it, Dan. What, what the hey? 
we're gonna want that fuel filter. So there's a thing with these bikes and the style of petcock. Once the uh, O-ring inside of here gets old and starts wearing out, these have a tendency to fall out, pouring fuel everywhere, causing mass chaos and destruction. And by that, I mean fire. <laughs> Time to pour gas in it? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like we have a mixture of gas, water, and rust. First gear. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. So we got like water, rust and stuff in the tank. That's probably not, <laughs> probably not uh, ideal, but you know, here we are. We got a fuel filter on, so don't want to be clogging up them carburetors. I don't see any, oh yeah, we do have a leak there. The fuel filter. We can either put more gas in it and see if we can get it to overpower what little bit of water was left in there. Or we just ride it on water and rust. Yeah. Very good. Nailed it. All right, so we got it running and we got the tank kind of clean, but I don't know if we have it clean enough to make it all the way home. So I'm gonna hop on it. We're gonna get as far as we can go. So I guess we're gonna see how far it'll get us. I love center stands. And this is, might be as far as it goes. <laughs> Come on, girl. It's going so well. So funny games so we put water in that tank. Let's see what happens, Dan. We it run a little rough. We just gotta get that moisture work through the system, that's all. Uh-oh. Come on, girl. I know you got it in you. It's not liking that. Come on. Gonna run out of battery. I wonder if we clogged it up already. burning oil off that front header pipe. Here we go. As slow as we can. Uh. No. Craig, you made it out the driveway! I made it out yeah. the driveway! <laughs> Not bad for a bike that's been sitting for 20 years. Dang it. All right, let's get out before the postal service gets mad at you. Now, if you thought I was gonna quit there, you don't know me good enough. Because we still got some work to do. Are you riding his bike? I'm taking his bike! <laughs>